Now we are going to talk about the most popular variant of the bootstrapping technique. Now the variant that we learned just now, parametric bootstrap has one drawback. And the drawback is that we need to know the form of the underlying distribution, the underlying process. While that is true in many cases, but there are a vast majority of situations where we do not know that. We know that the process is IID, but we do not know the underlying distribution, not even the form, the so-called non-parametric setup, where our ignorance is infinite dimensional. If our ignorance is finite dimensional, then each of those finite quantities is called a parameter and when our ignorance is infinite dimensional, we call it a non-parametric setup. So, if we have that situation, it turns out that the same bootstrapping idea can be generalized with great success. And that gives rise to what we shall call non-parametric bootstrap. Since that is the most popular version, people generally refer to this non-parametric version when they use the term bootstrap just by itself. So the main idea is that we have a distribution and we have got IID data from it. From this information alone, we want to get a good estimate of the distribution. There is a very powerful way of doing that, very simple yet very powerful precise way of doing this estimation and that uses a concept called the empirical cumulative distribution function or ECTF. Now this is generally taught in uh, undergraduate courses but it is a somewhat underestimated tool of statistics. Its power becomes apparent when we use it for bootstrap. So let's uh, quickly go through the basic concept. This is a way of estimating the CDF of the underlying distribution. Now we shall illustrate the concept using only univariate case. So our data occurs on the real line. And we have got various observations on it, some random points on the observations. And we have got say one observation here, another here. We have got two observations at this point and then you have got one observation here. Now the way we will define this thing is like this for any given point on this x-axis we will see the proportion of sample points that are to the left of this that are less than or equal to this and we want to see <coughs> how many of them are or less than, so the proportion of points less than or equal to this point. So, for example, in this case, I see how many points are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if I want to find out the value at this point where my finger points, then it will be 2 over 5 because 2 points are less than or equal to this. If I want to evaluate it exactly at this point, in that case, it will be again 2 over 5 because I say less than or equal to, so they so this is taken into account. As a result, the function continues to be 0, 0, 0, 0 up to this point, then jumps up to 1 fifth, continues like that, up to here, jumps up to 2 fifths, and here it goes up like that. At every step, it jumps up by either 1 over n or 2 over n or 3 over n, depending on how many points there are. So I will have something like this in this case, 0, 0, 0, then a 1 fifth jump, then another one fifth jump, here I have a two fifth jump because I have got two points both at the same place and here again I have got one one fifth so it starts its life at zero and ends its life at one. Always that is going to be the case, finitely many steps, the jumps occur exactly at my sample points. So that is called the empirical cumulative distribution function. It is nothing but the cumulative distribution function for this particular distribution, namely where each point occurs with equal probability. That is called the ECTF. Now the interesting property of this that this is a very very good 
approximation to the underlying cumulative distribution function and there are quite a few theorems to this still. Of course, the most well known of them is the law of large number, the weak law of large number which says that this function will converge pointwise to the underlying steadier. You take any single point, look at the value of this, at this point which is basically the proportion of points less than or equal to that, that naturally converges to its expectation which is the probability that the random variable takes a value less than or equal to that point. So we have pointwise convergence. But there is a much more strong result which is called the glibenko cantelli theorem or glibenko cantelli lemma sometimes it is called. It is a very powerful theorem which says that the empirical cumulative distribution function converges uniformly to the true cumulative distribution function. That is if you take the cumulative distribution function that is a card but take a very thin envelope around it like minus 0 0.001 to plus 0 0.001 then if your sample size is large enough then the entire cumulative empirical cumulative distribution function will lie within that thin envelope which is a very strong result and unlike some other such asymptotic results that are used in statistics this one is really good in the sense even for something like sample size 100 to 1000 the convergence behavior is apparent and it does not use any other uh, condition like the distribution did not be continuous or anything it just works out of the box a very beautiful very powerful theorem which makes non-parametric bootstrap click so in order to get a feel for this let us go into one R session. So in this case, again, I shall be playing God first. I will generate some data. Now I shall generate the data again from standard normal first. I will show another thing also later. But I will not use that information that I have generated from the standard normal when I play the role of a statistician. So I generate my data. I get my raw data. I have used a sample of size only 10. So let's take a, take a look at my raw data. Nothing is very interesting. Some numbers. Now I will plot the empirical cumulative distribution function. I deliberately took a small sample size so that you can see the steps clearly. See how it is computed. ECDF, there is a function called ECDF into this, this I pass my data vector and whatever that quantity is I can just pass that to plot and it will make a plot. So let's see how the plot looks like and the plot looks like this. So you can see all the steps and they also put some dots here meaning that since it is a, a <coughs> right continuous function and, uh, and left limit exists so that's why to emphasize the right continuity, they put those big dots over there. It starts out at 0 and it goes on step by step, goes all the way up to 1. It's always a non-decreasing function, then it's just a cumulative distribution function after all. It's a step function, finitely many steps. So we get this. I said that this is a very good approximation to the underlying CDF. Now, since I played God myself a moment ago, so I know what is that cumulative distribution function that is just P0. So why not overlay that thing on top of this and see how it compares. Let's see. I do curve P0 makes. I plot from minus 3 to 3. Add equal to true means I am adding and I am using a color. So I will use it. Let's see. And I get this. Ooh. I say that this is going to be a very good approximation. It looks like an abominably bad approximation. This step function and this continuous curve, by no stretch of imagination, you can call them similar. Well, that is because I used a very low sample size. You cannot expect very good behavior from just a sample size as low as 10. I used it so that you can see the step function nature of the ECDF. I will now do the same exercise but I will enhance my sample size to a reasonable thing. I will make it 1000. Let's 
go to the same exercise. Here's my plot of the ECDF once again. This is a step function. Do you believe that? Because the steps are so very tiny, it is just looks like a little jittery continuous curve. And uh, to facilitate the visualization, R has cleverly suppressed all those dots, the big black dots. So it just looks like a continuous thing. And let's overlay our theoretical curve on top of that. And you can see why I worship Klebenko Cantelli theorem. The two curves are almost same. Just imagine, last time I used the fact that I knew the underlying distribution was Gaussian. And here I am not using any information. Merely the fact that I am working with IID data and I get the same level of precision. So that's the thing, that's the reason why non-parametric bootstrap is so much more popular. Because you get essentially the same level of accuracy without lot less assumptions. So people just go for it. So you see how nicely it behaves. Now just a little reminder that Glivenko Cantelli does not require the underlying distribution to be continuous. I will show you an example where I will simulate from the Poisson distribution. So Poisson is abbreviated to PoS and R for random number generation. I will again generate 1000 observations. I will take lambda equal to 1. I will essentially carry out the same exercise then plot the ECDF. Let's take a look at that. And in this case you can see that the ECDF is indeed a step function. And now you might be wondering, I generated 1000 numbers, how come there are only so few steps? That is because you see the steps are spaced far apart, which means many observations are landing in the same point. For example, lots of observations, almost 40% of the observations are equal to zero. And all these observations are at one. So all the things are packed together. So the number of steps is low. But the difference between the steps is higher. And let's overlay on top of it the distribution function of Poisson. So Poise, I add the prefix P before that. P Poise, CDF of Poisson, same lambda. And I plot it from 0 to 100, 0 to 10. Let's take a look at that. And you see the performance is very good even in this case. <coughs> and uh, do not be bothered about the fact that it has drawn these very steep vertical lines. Ideally, the line should not be there. It is an artifact of R. It just tries to draw everything in a continuous way. So even for a step function, it tries to draw those lines. When you are plotting ECDF, R cleverly makes them step, makes the, makes the gap between the two steps. But when I am using just the generic function con, it does not do that. But anyway, the point is clear. ECDF is a very good approximation to the underlying CDF and it requires no assumption other than the fact that you are working with IID data.